right. Well, welcome to uh, the business of the business. Sometime in March, ah, the days they just run together. Who knows? Um, March sixteenth, I believe <laughs> it is, um, in twenty twenty one, the year after Armageddon. So uh, we're here. We're going to have a guest in a minute, but Caroline brought up something that she's going through with her agent, and it just seemed like the perfect thing to talk about because. Uh, anyway, uh, this is not, I, I went through this too. So give us a quick encapsulation, Caroline, of, of what happened uh, this yeah, week. Yeah, it helps please. to hear that other people have gone through it too. Oh, I went um, through it twice, I can think of. Yeah. Oh, amazing. That makes me feel good. Okay. Oh, here's Gerard too. That's awesome. So there we go. Hi, Gerard. Hey, Gerard. How are you? Hey, I'm doing well. How are you? Good, good to see you, Gerard Quincy James. Hey, good to see you so. Too. Uh, uh, Caroline and I were just talking uh, about an experience she had this week, um, and I and I want to uh, talk about this for a minute or two. So uh, listen to this because you might have had this experience <laughs> yourself. I certainly had it when I was a young actor. And then we'll okay. get into uh, all things Gerard. Is that all right? Yeah, that sounds good. Awesome. Okay, cool, cool. All right. Yeah. So the quick summary of this is that I am freelancing with a commercial agent who I've been with for a while and she's awesome. And I started getting a bunch of callbacks from the commercial stuff that she was sending me out on. And so this new agency that she's working with, I was contacted by them and I heard that the other agents that were part of the agency wanted to meet me over Zoom. And I was like, yeah, that makes sense. Like, you know, they, they have no idea who I am. Like I'm just suddenly on the roster. And so I kind of gave them an idea of scheduling. Nobody got back to me. Then I followed up a couple of weeks later saying, hey, I'm still like down to meet people if anybody wants to. And they were really apologetic. They had dropped the ball and they scheduled me for a meeting, um, a Zoom meeting. And so I hopped on that the other day and the agents who I was meeting were on the call and didn't seem to know who I was or why I was there. Um, they were like, we don't see your, your stuff in the submission section of the website. And I was like, oh, I didn't submit. I, I already work with the agency. Um, and I was like, yeah, and then we kind of set up this meeting so I could meet you. I started doing my monologue and the agent just like walked away from the computer <laughs> at, after like two lines and did whatever and came back like just as I was finishing the monologue, which of course I like rushed through the end because I was like, I just need this to be over. Um, and was like, oh, okay, thanks. Um, so we'll let you know by the end of the day. And I didn't know what, the, I mean, I could have, I assumed what that meant, which was that yeah. my level of work with them would be decided by the end of the day, but the meeting huh. wasn't set up as like, uh, we want to work with you in the legit department. I didn't know what any of that meant. And so right. it just ended with them emailing me saying, yeah, okay, so we'll, we'll like, we'll keep freelancing with you. We're just not going to offer you a contract right now. And I was like, I didn't know there was a contract on the table. <laughs> it was very strange. <laughs> So, I mean, I don't know if you've been through this, Gerard, but I went yeah, through this. I have. I've been through oh, this okay. more than I went through it when I had a manager. And before I left for Lambda uh, in 2019, I was signed to uh, IFM and I was looking, I was, I very much wanted an agent as well. I wanted to build a complete team. And some of the people I saw, but one in particular had his dog, had his dog in the room barking during my I monologue. might have met and this person kind of like <laughs> part of me you know and and I have a very and Bruce I don't know if you remember this or not you know but it's like I I come from I come from corporate America I used to work at a hedge fund I was in finance so I I have like a very professional demeanor but then also I'm kind of like this dude doesn't know me this is so disrespectful like I could just stop this monologue and just be like bro, what are you doing? Right. <laughs> you know right. what I mean? But, but at the same time, it was just like, all right, I'll finish. And he just had a bad attitude and he was mean and he didn't like my question, even though my question I thought was uh, valid based upon my research. And it was just a terrible, it was a terrible meeting. And I think, you know, Caroline, with that experience, is kind of like where, and I'm curious about your point of view on this, Bruce, is just where do we allow the line between, okay, technically, we're on the same level. Like, I'm paying you 10% commission for right. any job that I book, even right. jobs that I go and book myself. 
I got to pay you 10%. So one, eliminating the kind of hierarchy, but two, also standing up for yourself. I think that's mm. a very difficult, challenging thing to do as actors, especially when, whether you learn this in school or you learn it in the real world, that agents and some people in this industry, even artistic directors, directors, expect the actor to be here. Mm -hmm. When really, we are all professionals. We need to see each other as equals and respect each other in kind. So I'm curious, you know, what your what your take is on that, because that's this is absurd. Yeah. That's absurd it, that that happened. It is absurd, and uh, and I'm glad that you think it's absurd as well, Caroline. That is totally absurd. So I went through this twice with two different agents who you know they're probably out of business right now so when mm -hmm. i got on well no one's still working actually but anyway when i got out of school um and here's here's the deal i mean gerard you put it you hit the nail on the head so look we're professionals so how do you get paid you get paid 10 percent of what i make so let's start there really that's the business relationship and i think it's important to remember that but then to have that experience of the person getting up and walking away while you're acting. I mean, um, this just tells you this is not someone I want to work with. Think about, so agents negotiates contracts for you, right? I had an agent, one of the ones that I, I think uh, you might be working with now, negotiating like a big deal for me, right? And she's a great agent, right? And uh, I trusted her to negotiate tens of thousands of dollars on a, you know, a, a renewal of a commercial campaign, right? Mm -hmm. And she did a great job and we all got paid and it was great. But Caroline, think if that person is in the room negotiating for you, mm -hmm. because that's what agents like spend most of their time doing actually think about it they're not spending their time talking to actors they're spending their time talking to casting directors and directors and producers negotiating or pitching for their clients so that so you think that person you think she gets up and you know walks away from the camera when she's talking to scott rudin's office right she right. might <laughs> she might. might yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that's right? the representation of it yeah Exactly. So yep. uh, long and the short is uh, this is a business relationship. Yeah. If you if they can't act business like with you, don't ex don't trust them to act business like with other people. So why would you want to be in business with them? Yeah, is the long and the short of it. And as actors, point. you know, we take what we can get the the crumbs off masses table, and it's just not it, it's not the way to think of this relationship, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. You are in business together. And if they can't hold up their end of the business, <laughs> i.e. knowing what you're there for and being <laughs> polite through an interview, mm -hmm. which is not a lot of work. No, then, it's not. Then think of what, what they would do when they're sitting with Scott Root. That's a great I love that. You. And you know what, what, Gerard, what you said too, I, it crossed my mind for a moment because I am, you know, now being a couple of years out of school, I'm trying to think of it more of like, we're working together. It's a partnership. So if you're going to stand yep. up in my monologue, I'm going to wait until you come back. I was this close to doing it. And I know sometimes it's, it's not worth sometimes the drama that that could cause, but that's the, sometimes the line that I'm navigating too. of like, I'm, I'm, I'm performing. Like you asked me to, and now I'm doing it. So sit and watch it. It's a two minute monologue or less. So I, I considered, I considered yeah. stopping, but I just, I just, at that point, I just wanted it to be over. And so I just kept going. But yeah, it's a hard thing to decide in the moment. I'm like, to just be like, I'll wait. Like, <laughs> Yeah, you know, I, and I feel like this is the, the place that I'm at now. And I think it is because I'm, I'm older, you know, mm -hmm. and I'm very clear about the, I don't want to just sign with any agent. You know, I don't want to just sign with any manager. I did that last time. And I'm also very clear on the, the kind of work that I want to do, the mediums in which I want to do them. And so now that I've, I've I had a couple of meetings before, um, before Christmas and it was just, it was, one of them was absolutely wonderful. And we both realized that, oh, we actually wouldn't work well together because what I want as an artist is not necessarily what you are uh, focusing on. 
she was focusing more on sketch comedy, getting her clients up on SNL. And I very much want to do the HBO, Broadway, independent Sundance film focus. Can do comedy, have trained in it, but wasn't doing sketch comedy and writing my own skits or doing stand up. Mm-hmm. But I've met with some other people where I just realized for me, I was like, oh, I don't, I don't care what agency you work at. It's kind of like if you can't work the way that or if you're not meeting the needs that I think I need to get met from this business relationship, I'm at a point now where I'm like, OK, I'm cool with I'm cool with not going forward on my end. And the weird thing about that that I found is that by doing that and being clear about it made initially the agent wasn't that interested in me. She was kind of like, eh, you know, yeah, let's have a meeting whenever. And I was just like, oh, that's weird. I'm coming out of one of the top drama schools in the world on a Fulbright scholarship. I would think that this response would be different. But ego aside, the moment I stood up for myself, the moment that I kind of claimed my land of this is the Gerard Quincy James acting business, is the moment that then she started emailing me back. Then she started calling me, wanting to meet, offered to sign. And I was like, oh, so now it's different. (laughs) Mm -hmm. But before you had everything to say about my headshot and were so laissez-faire and putting on airs. And I'm just, for me, I'm like, I don't have time for that. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I think that that took a long time for me to learn and I'm still learning it. But I yeah. feel like if I were to meet someone like the agent that, you know, you're freelancing with or the agent that you, you've worked with, Bruce, in the past or even some of the other ones I've met, that I would have the, even if they were, I don't know, Paradigm, at the Paradigm or the Ab- or now they're not Abrams, they're A3, you know, at the A3 level to say, hey, you know what, thank you for this meeting, I appreciate it, but I'm not interested going forward. That's great. No, it's great to hear, Jared. Yeah. And I think I think we gotta, you know, you know, it's an evolution of time, right? And there's also, mm-hmm. as they say, there's levels to this thing, right? So you get mm-hmm. to a certain level and you start turning down work, right? Um, it doesn't happen a lot with me, but every now and again, my agent will not not even just send me an audition. Uh, this is in the legit world, and say do you want to do this? Hey, the casting director knows you, you know, it's this part on this thing. Do you want to do it? No, Um, not not really. Um, But thank you. Um, And, and that's where you can, you can, you you know, and like I said, I'm at a certain level. Tom Cruise is at a different level. I was at paradigm obviously for, for 15 years, right. Mm -hmm. On the commercial side, and uh, whenever I would talk to my agent, uh, who, who I love very much, and say, hey, you know, could I get over to the legit side? He would look at me just very nicely. He's a wonderful man and go, you know who your competition is on, on the legit side, Bruce? It, it's Lawrence Fishburne. Mm-hmm. So um, probably not. Probably mm-hmm. not. Um, so finding your level in this business and what you will tolerate and treating it like a business is an ongoing thing. Like you were saying, Gerard, it's an ongoing lesson. Just tell us a little bit more about what you're doing these days, Gerard. Yeah. You and I worked together yeah. a long time ago at, yeah. at yet another acting school in your undergrad days. When I was starting, when I was just like, it's so funny thinking about that now, you know, it's 2021 and I graduated from NYSTA in 2011, so mm-hmm. 10 years ago. Um, but I, I would say a lot of that going to that school, I thought was such a blessing because I knew nothing. I literally knew nothing. And I was coming from JP Morgan in the hedge fund world and very much, I think had, was very raw with zero technique. And I think you, Bruce, and I think Quinn and Robert Pietri, who taught film really helped and Jay really helped start, you know, shaping just not just rawness, but technique. And it took a long time for me, I think, to get to the point where I am now where I stopped being overly analytical or too in my head. And I think that culminated with 
me going to Lambda the second time. I did their summer program back in 2016 when I was at the actor studio drama school. I got my MFA from there. Um, and I did a summer Shakespeare and his contemporaries class at Lambda and just fell in love, fell in love with the training, with actioning, with the kind of British approach to text, which was the exact antithesis to the method and everything I felt like I was learning at the Actors Studio Drama School. Not everything. There were teachers yeah. that were kind of bringing it in. Yeah, there were teachers that were bringing it in, but I was used to, and, you know, not to be trite with the, the ASDS because I loved that school and I loved my teachers. But, you know, there was, there was a lot of, there was a lot of time being spent on relaxation and substitutions and uh, effective sense memories and all these things that I feel like had I not gone to that school, I wouldn't be able to quickly do now. But when I started auditioning, there's no time for that. All right, I would be, good. I would be working, I would be working at a, and this actually happened to me. I was working at a high end lounge. I got an audition for Detroit 67 at the Clarence, not Detroit 67 for, uh, uh, for an August Wilson play. I didn't, uh, I didn't end up getting it, but I got two trains running. Seven, anyway, two trains running. Yes. And I had, I got that audition like two days before, but I had work both of the days that I got the audition and I was getting off at two in the morning yeah. and it took 3 a.m. to get back home to Brooklyn. So I was literally just learning. I was doing what I think a lot of other actors do and you hustle and you figure it out. And I would greet a table send the other server over the table and I'll be behind the bar. And <laughs> oh, I would be behind the bar and I would just down the scene. break it yeah. And it was quick. I had, a, yeah. I had my pencil yeah. that I was using to take down orders and I was just boom, 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 breaking down the script. I was like, okay, the event of the scene is here. Mm -hmm. I know that. Let me uh, shameless plug and talk about something that you uh, talked about, which is applying script techniques and audition techniques uh, quickly mm -hmm. after having a method background. Uh, plug shameless plug, I was raised and trained method acting. If you read the first chapter of my book, you'll see like I was trained by a guy who was trained by Strasbourg um, mm -hmm. and then learned um, uh, a much more British approach at Carnegie Mellon, um, an outside in, fought it viciously, and then found mm -hmm. my own way to uh, get ready for specifically for auditions, right? Because I think what you said was brilliant, right? And this is in, in my course that I talk a lot about. Um, you have to do the stuff that gets you the acting stuff, right? You, yep. you have to do that. For you, if it's Chekhov, if it's Meisner, if it's Method, if it's uh, Grotowski, whatever it is, you, you have to do that stuff that gets you the reality of uh, being the character in the situation. What I want to say is there's techniques for breaking down a script and getting ready for an audition that are very simple, very clear, and go right on top of whatever it is you do as an actor, right? Mm -hmm. I, I think sometimes people think there's a difference between acting and auditioning. And there is, because auditioning is... The the way to get a job, but it's it's all putting these techniques on top of your acting training. And I love that you talk so much about your acting training. And obviously, Caroline, I worked with you at NYU and know your acting training. This is the, this that we're talking about on on this webinar and in this course is techniques to get jobs so you can go do the acting. Mm -hmm. Go do the acting. But these are the techniques to get you there. Do you have a plan for what you talked about, what you wanted to do? Do you have like a one year plan that you want to achieve? Do you have um, yeah. you know, networking I mean, sheet I, and all that sort of stuff that's driving I do. you? I have, I have a networking sheet. I've been, I have a, a list of agents that I've already contacted and more that I want to be in contact with that I've emailed. I email every single week. Um, oh, wow. I've been submitting. Good. I'm a, I'm part of AEA, so gratefully and graciously, I'm able to submit uh, for the equity submissions that they have up every week. So I just submitted mm -hmm. for Skeleton Crew, 
another Dominique Morisot play mm -hmm. directed by the amazing Ruben Santiago. So mm -hmm. um, I, that's what I've been doing, which for me is great because I'm sticky every single week. I'm reading a new play. I'm learning a new monologue or, and I'm warming up every single week, everything that I do from, Alexander to get my body and my mind relaxed and free any tension in my body to all my vocal warm-ups to all the checkoff stuff that I learned over at Lambda. I'm doing that consistently every single week. And oh, since I've been back in October, I think I've been, I've, I've been blessed to work every single month. It's not necessarily like the goal, which is to get a guest star on a TV show and to have an agent and a manager. These are the goals that I kind of have for the end of the year, by the end of the year. Right. Um, like, but doing Zoom plays, I've been doing Zoom plays every single month. And so that's been- Caroline is the queen blessing. of Zoom plays as well. Yeah, yeah like it's just- It's, it's so great. helpful. Yeah, it's so mm -hmm. helpful just to stay warm and just always be doing it. And like you said, just reading something new every week, it's the best, yeah. And I was mm -hmm. skeptical about it at first too, but now it's like really keeping like my soul going. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, and just, I mean, I part of the silver lining, and I saw it this way, not everybody saw it this way in my class, but when we moved to Zoom classes, we had to get used to this medium. This, this has, whether mm. we like it or not as actors, this has kind of become a new medium. Yeah. And so it is setting up the background and the ring light and having my laptop and knowing depth perception in a weird way, doing theater, having the size of theater, but with a pseudo kind of focus on your frame was something that no one I had no idea how to do oh no but it's also just teaching looking at I'm looking at Gerard but that's the eye line actually yeah. okay yeah. so that's television technique that yep. is camera technique that that by by osmosis or you who notice it we are learning these days much more mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think by osmosis, it is taken away. You know, I'll see what it's like the next time I'm in a room. Mm -hmm. I remember I had a call back for Blue Bloods, and it was one thing to do it with. I, I went into Kim Misha or uh, Bowling Misha, and I met with Josie Rodriguez, who I love, who's amazing. Mm -hmm. the, the casting assistant, or I think she's now a casting director. I think director. she's full casting director, she's full there, casting, isn't she? Now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, and that was one thing, and that was a level of nerves. And then going to the callback or the producer session, and it was like twelve people at that's a right, long, you know. And, but she's great, tables. though. I mean, speaking about a casting director who's great because she's so loving, so nice, mm -hmm. but so hard. Like yep. she's <laughs> like, you know, when you walk in there, and if, if you've been into Bowling Mission or any really great casting director's office who are working on that high level stuff you know they cast blue bloods everything mm -hmm. right um and uh like they there's no mess like she's really lovely but it's like we were talking about before it's a business are yep. you going are, are i called you in to do a job are you going to do this job now yep and if you do it everybody's happy and really likes you <laughs> if you don't yeah. It's really a feeling like, ah, oh, why did we all do this? Why did I waste time? And that was, and she's, she's very, she creates the great environment. So mm -hmm. you can do your best, but make no mistake. You got to do your best. And that you got to do kind your, of the, that's isn't kind that of the, the environment best, I felt like I had with her. Yeah. Isn't and that the is. best environment you want to be in? And when you find a casting director, so that's early in the process, right? This is before directors and rehearsals and everything. But when you find a casting director that's great like that, oh my God, I finally got a part on Blue Bloods with her, right? Oh. After like nine auditions for Blue Bloods, but, and then for everything else, but they always kept calling me in. And yep. finally, but just working with someone like that is a joy, a and joy. It, cha it changed my, really what it, what it did for me was, I always thought casting directors, and I think you've said this before, you were like, casting directors want you to book the job. 
You know, it's like, <laughs> it makes right. it, oh my God, when they, when you're the person, they're like, we're done. You know, you make their day <laughs> exactly. easier. Sandwiches. And, it's like, yeah. yeah. And so yeah. that was a, such a great, like, in person reminder of like, okay, she wants me to get this. Like, I'm at a place where, I'm like, oh yeah, the agent that I want. And the type of work that I want to be doing, I want to audition three to four times a week. I want to have that level of consistency. And I've had, I, I had a manager tell me this at Lambda when we did a workshop. And he was saying, he was like, you guys, you know, we talked about competition. He's like, a lot of people say like, oh, you know, don't worry about the competition in this business. And he was like, yeah, don't worry about it from a creative standpoint. But you need to know that it's real. And he was like, you need to be consistent in every single audition. There is no version of, ah, uh, today Gerard just kind of phoned it in. There is no version of that because there's a version of you that won't. There you go. And that's, oh, just, yeah. you know. I want to yeah. close on that just because we're running out of time here, Gerard. Oh, you yeah. are, uh, I remember uh, working with you back in the day and you were always such a, a professional. And I always respected Thank you. you as a person um so i'm so glad to see that you've continued on in your career and are growing and learning and making choices that are right for you so yeah thank you appreciate it thank you very much for taking the time all right we are off ladies and gentlemen gerard you we will stay in touch caroline yes, we'll see you next week love it thank you gerard this is awesome very inspiring <laughs> thank you all right y'all Take care. Bye. Bye-bye.